Next. And then my, my humble request to all of you is, I'm not covering all the ratios. I'm covering only those ratios which are very, very important from practical relevance and something which is very much important from examination point of view, say basically for professional course students, okay? Then this is very important. Activity ratio, okay? Uh, we, we call them as uh, turnover ratios or performance ratio. A part of it was is what already we discussed. Working capital turnover ratio is also part of activity ratio. So an activity ratio basically will be comparing the sales with the assets. Let's see what are the classifications. We'll be talking about capital turnover ratio. We'll be talking about fixed asset ratio. We'll be talking about total asset turnover ratio and working capital turnover ratio, which already we have discussed. Okay. Now, why we should talk about capital turnover ratio? It's very important because because the capital you invest in your business should get rotated. I repeat the capital which you invest in your business should get rotated. It should not get stagnated at one particular point. The stagnation could bring down the earning efficiency of the business. How to understand? Let's take an example. Let's take the balance sheet. Let's say I invest equity of 100 million in my business and with that 100 million I create various assets of 100. Now, I have to use these assets to produce products and I should sell them. Let's say I am using these assets and that is going to help me to produce products and achieve sales. Let's say my sales, so let me prepare a small income statement. Let's say my sales is something like uh, 50. Every year my sales is 50 million, my total assets are 100 million. Every year my sales are 50 million. Now this sales is not going to help me Okay, what is important for me is profit. It means from sale, let me deduct my expenses. My expenses are, let's say, 45. So what is my profit? My profit is 50 minus 45. I have a profit of only 5. Now, let's assume this is the profit available for equity shareholders. So let's see what is going to be the return on investment for equity shareholders. We are going to get this profit of 5 for their equity contribution of 100 and what is the return they are going to get? They are going to get a return of uh, 5 on 100. It means they are hardly getting 5%. And why this is happening? This is happening because they could achieve sales of only 50 and their cost, let me express this as percentage, their cost is 50 multiplied by 90%. Their cost is 45, so they can achieve a profit of only 5, and this is available for equity shareholders, so they can hardly get uh, 5%. Now just imagine you are going to make an effort to improve this, assuming it's a trading business, okay? So if you increase this to 75, let's see what is going to happen. Your expenses are 67.5, your profit has become now 7.5. Now this 7.5 is available for equity shareholders. It means return on equity shareholders funds is increasing to 5%. Earlier it was how much? Earlier it was only 5%. Now it has increased to sorry 8%. Right? Now let me make a small change. Let me make this as uh, 90 and probably you can make an argument that your all your expenses will not be variable. So I agree with that. So let me make a small change for that also. Let's say my expenses are going to be 90%. Okay, so on 50 it is 90%. Or let me modify this bit. Let's say it is 80%. My sales is 50. My expenses variable or 80%. And my fixed expense is 5. So let whatever be the change in sales, my fixed expense will remain 5. So my profit will be 50 minus 40 minus 5. So I will have a profit of 5. So 5 on 100, they are getting only return on equity shareholders funds is only 5%. Now, let me change this. Let's see the kind of impact it is going to create. If sales increases from 50 to 60, my expense will increase to 45. Fixed will remain at 5. Profit has become 7. So my return available for equity shareholders has increased to 7%. If it becomes 80, the return is increasing to 11%. 
If it is becoming 100, the return is 15 percent. If it is 120, the return is 19 percent and it goes. It means if there is going to be a relationship between your sales and the capital employed. That is if your sales is going to exceed the capital employed or if the sales is going to exceed the total assets, then the return available for equity shareholders would increase many fold. And that would basically measure the way in which effectively you are conducting the business. Okay? So if you have more sales in link with or if it is going to be greater than your equity, then you are doing well, really well. Okay, and that is uh, sometimes very easily possible with case in case of service industries because the turnover and fixed assets or total assets will barely have a linkage. But in case of manufacturing industries, there is absolutely linkage with the sales and total assets. And if they are going to be matching, matching, or if they are going to be greater than the total assets, then that business would be doing extremely wonderful. Okay, so that's why we should understand this capital turnover ratio. In capital turnover ratio, if you compare the capital and sales, that is sales divided by capital, and when the ratio was say 120 divided by 100, you had the number as 1.2, look at the return, the return is 19%. But when the ratio is 1, the return is 15%. When the ratio is say 0.8, the return is 11%. When the ratio is say 0.5, the return is 5%. So now you understand the significance of uh, this capital turnover ratio. The same concept can be applied for fixed asset ratio and total assets turnover ratio. Okay. So in fixed asset ratio, what we do? We try to compare the sales with fixed assets. So if I make it as a formula, formula for capital turnover ratio is going to be, we'll say, sales divided by total capital employed. And if I take uh, fixed assets turnover ratio, the formula will be simple. Instead of capital, I'll say fixed assets. Fixed assets turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by, instead of total capital employed, we'll say fixed assets. Now this ratio would measure the relationship between the fixed assets and sales, whether all fixed assets you have created, whether they are contributing to sales or not. Because it is possible you will be creating a lot of non-productive fixed assets useless fixed assets. You'll be simply keep on be investing in land which is not going to contribute anything to the sales. So those land are not going to generate any revenue for you. Only a small portion of assets where you have installed your plant and machinery will generate revenue but all the land is an asset for that you have borrowed capital and that has a cost and that cost have to be met only from those small plant and machineries which are working for this entire organization. Okay, So that could be the kind of relevance of fixed assets turnover ratio. Then we have total assets turnover ratio. It is a replica of capital turnover ratio. Instead of uh, in the denominator saying total capital employed, we'll say total assets. Then working capital turnover ratio we have already covered. Okay, so I think uh, we should we should uh, close with this. Uh, maybe we can have it like uh, part one and all because uh, ratios by itself is a very very long top uh, topic and uh, we have uh, many other ratios like profitability ratios and all to be covered, but uh, as of now, we'll, we'll close with this. As of now, we'll close with this. So, so far we have uh, talked about liquidity ratios. We have talked about, uh, say, the activity ratios. We have talked about capital ratios. And we have talked about the ratios which have immediate practical relevance. Say something like your current ratio, your debt equity ratio, your debt service coverage ratio, working capital turnover ratios. Okay. So now I'm. Uh, leaving it for discussion. If you have any doubts or any questions, you can post.